Echo and the weaving of the Netflix Marvel Universe to the MCU. Hi, thank you for tuning in to the Tom Battelson Show. Yeah. Echo on Disney Plus. I watched that. I watched it in a day. The Adventures of Maya Lopez, your death superhero. Echo makes their first appearance in Daredevil number nine. That's from December of 1999. She is a descendant of the original Choctaw tribe, one of the OGs, okay? Spoiler alert, this is gonna be loaded full of spoilers. I won't change the light because my goodness, it's all gonna be spoiled. Uh, you can catch this entire series. It is only three hours and 21 minutes long total runtime, except that it isn't, because that counts the opening credits, the catch-up part, and then the uh, the closing credits, which are in nine different languages. You can cut about 20 minutes off of this time and do it in under three hours. It's a good watch, and it's fun, and it's entertaining. Uh, I, I liked Echo just right off the bat, I'll tell you. <clears throat> so, Maya's arc, her origin story, that's what we're seeing, the origin story of how she became Echo. It is a very traditional arc. What do I mean by that? A traditional superhero arc or supervillain arc is you take them at a very young and formidable age and you throw a bunch of terrible stuff at them, you kill off parents, you kill off loved ones, you have terrible things happen to them and then you see how they react. And the ones who decide to become the heroes and the ones who decide to become the villains. It is a very traditional arc. This is also the MCU's way to weave in the Marvel characters from the Netflix shows, such as Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Defenders, and The Punisher. But let's be honest, I think we'll just see Charlie Cox's Daredevil, and I think we'll see John Bernthal's The Punisher. Sorry, Iron Fist, you're not coming. I don't think we'll see Iron Fist. Jeez, did y'all see Iron Fist? Please don't. Um, so, uh, also, it connects the MCU through the Hawkeye series. So it is weaved through that Hawkeye, while as Ronan, killed Maya's dad. And then you find out later that it was the kingpin that set the whole thing up. And that starts her on her journey to be a villain or to be a hero and to find her own way. So, Echo's power. What can she do? She is a gifted martial artist and sharpshooter with any object or weapon. She's... She's like Daredevil is in that aspect. She's really good at fighting. She's really good at shooting with anything in her hands. The big power that she has, which is not revealed completely until the final episode, but you kind of get it along the way, is she has the power of every or any ancestor from the Choctaw tribe. She can tap into anything that any one of them has ever done or were good at it. She's like Rey. She's all the Jedi. She's all the Choctaw tribe. That's a great power. That's a, that's a neat, that's, yeah, that's neat. That's a neat thing to be able to tap into anyone from your family tree and gain the powers that they used to have. Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic thing. So, originally she's a villain and she's paired up with Kingpin, played brilliantly by Vincent D'Onofrio. That comes from the, from the Hawkeye series. We get to see him back in full force. I love him as Kingpin. I think he's great. I think he's, an, he's a great Kingpin. Not to bag on Michael Clark Duncan, or if you've actually watched The Trial of the Incredible Hulk and seen John Reese davies play Kingpin, don't, by the way, don't watch that. Don't go back and watch that. You're gonna be my age, you're gonna wanna watch, if you're my age, you're gonna wanna watch all the Incredible Hulk television series stuff with David Banner and Bill Bixby, but don't, no, don't. Lou Ferrigno, yeah, don't. Don't watch that. <laughs> but I love, oh, I do. I, I love Vince D'Onofrio as Wilson Fisk. Um, yeah, seeing him show up, seeing Daredevil show up, seeing Hawkeye as Ronan show up, the entire way they're trying to weave this in because we love, I think it's because we really do love Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio. I think that's the reason this whole thing is coming about. Like, how do we weave those characters back in? Because the Netflix Daredevil series was really good. It was really, really good. Especially the ones with, uh, with the Punisher, with John Bernthal, really good. 
Like you really wanted to watch that series. That's the reason, I think it's the reason I got Netflix streaming back in the day when it first started to come out and it stopped getting discs sent to my house. Did you all do that? But now we can stream anything we want. And Daredevil was one of those things. It was the reason I got streaming television. Yeah, that's something. I didn't realize that until just now. It's not even in my notes. But yeah, Echo. Echo's entertaining. Echo has Graham Greene. I love Graham Greene. I'll watch him do anything. I think he's very entertaining. The acting is okay. The dialogue is okay. There are a couple of things where it's like, uh, get to the point, get to the story, get to the fight scenes. And Echo is a little flip-floppy for me as a character. She's good, she's bad, she's good, she's bad, she's good, she's bad. She wants to be a kingpin, she wants to be the, she wants to be the queen pin. I love that line. That she's gonna, he's gonna make me the queen pin. Oh, okay. The kingpin, the queen pin, the father-son thing. The end, when she really becomes the hero, she tries to save Wilson Fisk. That's an aw shucks moment where she enters his mind and has this moment where she tries to get him to let go of the pain like she's being taught to be let go of the pain and become a different person altogether. And she breaks him. She breaks Wilson Fisk for a moment and we don't see what happens, but we know he's not gonna turn. We know he's not gonna go good, but that's what the hero does. It's like the end of the Batman when he jumps into the water and he lights the flare. That's him being the hero. Echo is the hero. And at the last scene, she makes that choice to be the hero. Yeah, Echo. Watch Echo. Watch it. That'll do it for this week for my review of Echo, starring Alakwa Cox in the lead role. She does a great job. I should have mentioned her in the review, and I didn't, but I just did. So absolutely watch her for that. Like and subscribe if you like this content, and hit that notification bell so you know when my stuff drops. It drops on Sunday. Thanks for joining me on this journey of all the nerd and geeky stuff that I love. Let me know what you're geeking out about. Let me know what your nerd is. And until I see you next time, as always, peace, love, live long, and prosper. And I mean it.